So Mark Slareth is now joining us live. You know, um, let me start with this because we just had Peter King on. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett, I said yesterday, I this is one of these that it feels right. Uh, I really like the GM in Denver. They've got the left tackle, the running backs, wide receivers, fan, the tight end, um, I and Fangio built up a pretty darn good defense. I kind of feel like they are a quarterback and a coach away from being great. And I liked this hire. How is it playing in your, your town, Denver? I, I think it's playing all right. I mean, I think people, you know, understand that you've got to have the quarterback regardless who the coach is. So, uh, you know, the bottom line for me, Colin, is – that you look at Nathaniel Hackett and he brings some energy. He brings enthusiasm. He brings that kind of new school of coaching. Um, you know, players just want to know that they're being developed. Players want to know that they're going to have a chance to get better. And I think that's what Nathaniel Hackett brings. You know, he brings an excitement and an energy. And, you know, I'll tell you, going around the National Football League and meeting with coaches and, and meeting with different organizations, like you walk into the Rams organization, for instance, and Sean McVay just lights up a room. And I think that's what happened here. I don't think he was necessarily the number one candidate right off the bat. But I think he lit up that room. He brought that energy. He brought that enthusiasm plus that football knowledge. I mean, this guy's a football lifer. His his father was a, you know, he was a, a football coach forever. Um, and so I think that all that stuff came together and he became the front runner. He became the number one candidate through this process, through this interview process. So I, I think it's a really good hire. And, um, you know, I always say there's two types of people, the type of people that energize the room when they walk into it and the type of people who energize the room when they walk out of it. And uh, last, you know, last couple of years, they had one of those that energized the room when he walked out of it type of coaches. And they want to move into that new frontier of NFL coaches that are positive, that really bring that energy that bring a different way of teaching, and I think Nathaniel Hackett is one of those guys. You know, it's interesting. John Elway, Peyton Manning, and potentially Aaron Rodgers all, I mean, Elway brings some gravitas. Peyton Manning is super intense. It, I mean, he and Elway butted heads. Aaron can be a little high maintenance. So when I look at Aaron coming out there, um, it's a city that has a history. There's a lot of pro sports teams there. It's a big market mm -hmm. media. It's always played bigger than it is. Denver may not be a top 10 city in terms of size, but when you're there, the airport, the pro sports, uh, the world-class skiing, it's, it's a bigger city than it's rated in terms of population. It can handle big people. It can ha you know, you, you're not going to get mobbed at a restaurant. It's not Orlando and Shaq. I think Aaron Rodgers would be happy there. That's my takeaway. The city's had Aaron. It's had Elway. It's had Peyton. I think it works there for him. I do too. And and here's the other thing that's been uh, like I, I find kind of fascinating and almost funny. And I keep hearing people on, you know, on national shows across America talking about, well, does he really want to go and compete against Patrick Mahomes? Like, like, is that going to be the deciding fact? I'm like, Hey man, competitors compete. You think Aaron Rodgers is afraid of, of Patrick Mahomes? You think he's afraid to compete? He's one of the. He's going to be a four, probably going to be the four time MVP of the league. Like, 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 Bra like Brady was. He didn't pick the Chargers because he had to compete against Mahomes. Are you kidding me? No, that has not. I don't think that has anything to do. Competitors love to compete, regardless. I don't think it has anything to do with it. I think he's going to go where he feels the most comfortable, where he feels like he's got a chance to win with somebody that he wants to play with, with somebody that he wants to, you know, to have coach him. So I think it gives the Broncos a legitimate, like a legitimate big leg up on the rest of the competition as far as landing Aaron Rodgers if he does, in fact, choose to leave Green Bay. You know, it's interesting. I was saying, uh, I said it earlier, uh, I, I, I won't speak for women, but when you're a guy and you're going to go on a Vegas trip or a camping trip or a whitewater rafting trip or a hunting trip, uh, you want guys that what I would call a good hang. It's, they're just, mm -hmm. you know, they're not about themselves. They're not needy. And I said, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is... Not high maintenance. He's a guy's guy. He's a foxhole guy. And you played in this league for a long time. And I said, you know, I know analytically he gets beat up and it's not artistic and he's not nearly as gifted as, you know, the other three quarterbacks. But there is value 
if you look at the Niners when he plays and everybody else that plays, there is something to be said about the guys like Garoppolo. I've seen him outduel Burrow late, outduel Aaron late, outduel Kyler Murray and Stafford late. Speak to that. The, the, the guy, the, yeah. he's just, there's a quality about him that he's a, he's a foxhole guy. Guys like him and they trust him. Yeah, guys love playing with him in San Francisco. They absolutely love him. Um, and he is. He's one of those guys. He's a foxhole guy. And this guy, let me just tell you this, and, and Kyle Shanahan, straight from Kyle Shanahan, talked to me about, hey, listen, if you lined up 10, 15 quarterbacks in an arm strength test from the standpoint of how far can you throw it, uh, he wouldn't be in the top 10. But when it comes to spinning the football and getting it to a, a receiver, he could be late with that out on the sideline. He goes, there's nobody that spins it better than Jimmy Garoppolo. The, 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 the spiral just is so tight. The ball gets there on time. Yeah. He can make, you know, he can make those type of throws. The issue that you get in with, with Jimmy Garoppolo when you study it on, on film, he's going to throw it to the other team three times. Yeah. It's just a matter if they catch it or not. <laughs> like, that, like he's going to make three mistakes where he's like, yeah. here you go. And if you catch it, the, the Niners will lose. If you like in Green Bay, how many times do you see him throw that out and you're like, oh, no, don't do it. And, and you know, the DB isn't playing the ball. He's playing the receiver. And it had been a pick six. I think it was two that I looked at that said that would have been a pick six had the DB been playing the ball as opposed to playing the receiver. But, you know, if, if you get away with it, um, he gives you a chance to every weekend to win. You know, but like I said, there's going to be three plays a game or three throws a game where you just kind of scratch your head and say, what were you looking at? Why did you pull the trigger on that? You know, um, Burrow uh, obviously went on the road, won big SEC games, and those are 100,000-seat stadiums are crazy. Everybody's liquored up. Uh, the NFL doesn't have – you can make an argument that very few NFL stadiums, Arrowhead's probably one of them, can rival playing at Alabama. Or, you know, those stadiums mm -hmm. are the craziest in the country and loudest. And uh, he made a remark about it this week. I've, I've been in SEC stadiums. But I, but I will say this. Um, winning on the road is special. Like San Francisco won on the road. You know, Cincinnati won on the road. Kind of take me to your career. There is a bonding experience on the road. And yeah. I've, I've watched some of the best games I've seen this year. Green Bay beating Arizona, missing 11 starters on the road may have been the best I saw a team play this year. Your thoughts about Cincinnati's chances at Arrowhead and just kind of that reality of being the dog, going into a loud place, and, and trying to conquer. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that changes for you in Kansas City, and I've won a playoff game in Kansas City on the road, so um, it is incredibly loud. The other thing is the way the stadium is built, the benches are about – eight feet behind or the, the the fans are about eight feet behind the bench where you sit and they're about maybe 10 12 feet above your head and so they're like leaning over almost in your like you get a little huddle on the bench you know and you're talking about game planning stuff and they're in your ear just dog cussing you I mean they are right on top of you in Arrowhead so I think it even plays louder um, then a lot of stadiums that have space between the benches and, and where the fans sit, it just, it's, again, it's the loudest stadium I've ever played in. Um, an incredibly difficult place to go win a football game. And I think it will rival any stadium as far as crowd noise is concerned, whether it's the SEC or whether it's in Seattle or wherever the case may be. So I think it is one of those things that's going to be tough. And, and ultimately, you know, you talk about giving up nine sacks. I just did a reunion. Um, with the 91 Washington team um, that, that you know, was a world champion, Super Bowl 26 reunion. Joe Gibbs spoke and Charlie Cashley. We probably had 20 guys that were a part of that Zoom reunion. And Joe Gibbs brought up that in 19 games in 1991, we had Mark Rippon as our quarterback. We gave up nine total sacks in 19 <laughs> games. They gave up nine sacks in a game. I, I just I still can't believe that you won that game. Yeah. Like Joe Burrow, I tip my cap to Joe Burrow and obviously Ryan Tannehill threw three picks and um but the bottom line is that was as gutsy a performance as I've ever seen. You are not going into Kansas City with that crowd noise and with that lack of protection and that spread offense 
and 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 win a game against the Chiefs if you don't shore that up. I I, I personally feel like you're going to get you you're going to suffer a double digit loss in Kansas City. And it's been a good run. Yeah. And like I said, Joe Burrow in this offense has been incredible and the defense played exceptionally well against Tennessee, but this is a different animal going into Kansas City. Mark Schlereth, have a great weekend. Three rings, two-time Pro Bowler. Nice talking to you, buddy. Fox Sports. Lot. Likewise, buddy. Take care. Yeah. Uh, I, I initially thought Kansas City would blow them out, and then I just went game to game, half to half with Cincinnati, and they tend to play really well against good teams. But it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different animal. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.